thank you for your kindness, Madam Chair, and, and, and I thank the ranking member. Uh, and I thank both of your staffs uh, for working so hard to get us to this point. Um, this is a very important piece of legislation. Um, I've heard a lot from my fellow senators, and I'm grateful for uh, the thought leadership you and members of, of your staff have, have put into this process. And I'm especially proud of my own team, who spent countless hours uh, developing a strong, pro-innovation, anti-China uh, Communist Party uh, piece of legislation that will help the United States win the 21st century. Today, we still have uh, a unique opportunity, uh, I believe, with lots of improvement um, to dramatically improve how our country innovates and develops new technologies and how we are positioned with, the, uh, with respect to the Chinese Communist Party. By virtue of being the first to emerge on the other side of this pandemic, which seems to uh, have come from communist China, the Chinese Communist Party is working hard to use the crisis to its advantage by extending its influence over the world's economy. A report from the Chinese Academy of Sciences bluntly observes it's possible to turn the crisis into an opportunity to increase the trust and the dependence of all countries around the world in made in China. The chairman of China's state-owned National Building Materials Group adds that China will turn crisis into opportunity. It will transform and upgrade and strengthen its position in the international industry chain. There's a seriousness of purpose to the Chinese Communist Party and to their leaders. Until now, the US has primarily focused on defensive countermeasures, very important to thwart aggression by the Chinese Communist Party, blocking Huawei, tightening export controls, improving foreign investment rules. Defensive investment approaches remain important and continue to deserve our firm commitment and attention. But if America is actually to lead the world in the 21st century, we have to go on offense, just as we did in the 20th century. Now is the time for America's elected representatives to constrain our parochial interests. Constrain our parochial interests. And properly work through our assigned committees of jurisdiction and work with our allies and partners and invest in ourselves and give the world a clear alternative to what China presents. With advanced technology and a stronger economy, America can indeed maintain the wherewithal to meet the challenges and, um, and, and, and uh, opportunities uh, that we face and advance our national interests. So the bipartisan substitute amendment that's been filed by the chair and ranking member for today's markup is indeed the product of, of many successful negotiations and also, I suspect, some surprises. Um, that's not unprecedented here in, in Washington. Thanks to some thoughtful amendments from many of my Republican colleagues, we've added Senator Thune's Quantum Network Infrastructure and Workforce Development Act, Senator Fisher's Advancing Precision and Agriculture Capabilities Act, Senator Lummis's language on distributed ledger technology is a key focus area, and uh, also added a critical minerals mining research program. And thanks to Senator Sullivan, we've added a research funds accounting section. In addition, with input from many uh, members on the importance of this issue, uh, which I wholeheartedly agree with, the subtitle includes a new Title III on research security measures. Now, to be clear, this is an area where I believe we'll need to continue to sand and polish to ensure that we achieve the desired outcome of protecting our federal research investments from China and from other state actors. This is a floor, not a ceiling. And I hope we can strengthen these protections further as this bill moves to the Senate floor. To that end, I'm also grateful for the input of Senator Portman, one of our original co-sponsors, who is working as we speak in the Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee to mark up a bipartisan agreement on the Safeguarding American Innovation Act, which I understand is likely to be added to the China bill when the various committee components get to the floor. Now, those are just a few examples of, of the many contributions of colleagues on my side, and I want to acknowledge there are many from my Democratic colleagues as well, and I appreciate that. Um, they've all been incorporated to improve uh, certain portions of this work product thanks to a bipartisan, largely regular order process. Though I'm under no illusions about what might be accomplished in this committee markup, I am mindful of the opportunities for improvement of this bill 
once it hits the floor and is subject to amendment. Accordingly, I will urge your support for the Endless Frontier Act when we're finished here today. Thank you, Madam Chair.